So what about the generic, generic second generation antipsychotics that I like? <laughs> well, they're easy to access because they're inexpensive. For example, I have a patient on olanzapine and uh, the patient assistance program stopped because it, after all, it's been generic for a, for a long time. And this patient had to get their meds. So they got it at Costco and they got six months of olanzapine for $90. Whoa! So very easy to access for that particular person. There are many to choose from. In the old days, we didn't have that many. Now we do. And now there's a special case of clozapine, too, wow. that is only generic, now generic. It's the only antipsychotic FDA approved for treatment-resistant uh, schizophrenia as well as suicidal behavior in patients with schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder. So there's a land of plenty here with the <laughs> generic SGAs. However, there's no generic SGA LAI, at least not, not right yet. now, but there will be. maybe soon. Coming soon. All are currently branded and priced as such. And uh, a con here, I, I think you will address this, is that some newer branded SGAs do offer advantages in terms of certain aspects of tolerability. I would agree. So, let's see. What can we select uh, from? Uh, here's a list of some first-generation antipsychotics that I, I don't really like prescribing and some generic SGAs, which I do like prescribing. They used to all be branded, and here are the year that it's first approved. So we have a lot of experience with these. The latest addition to this list is lorazidone, approved in 2010, now generic. And we've learned how to dose them because we have so much experience with them. You know, haloperidol is actually still used fairly frequently of the first generations. Absolutely. So uh, I don't prescribe them unless I have to. And right. haloperidol, usually in the form of haloperidol decanoate, yeah. where some of the patients uh, just don't want to switch. And it takes a crisis before they can be switched. And that crisis is usually the emergence of tardive dyskinesia on top of their drug-induced Parkinsonism. And we have to do something about that. Now, the antipsychotics are all a heterogeneous group, right? The binding to dopamine receptors in the striatum does vary. Some are full-on antagonists and some are partial agonists. And, you know, this makes for a variety in terms of how individuals will respond and how individuals will tolerate the drug. Then there's all these other receptors. And depending on which receptors are hit by which antipsychotic, you end up with a different array of side effects. But you may also have a different array of what works and what doesn't for that individual. Mm -hmm. In reality, though, one person can respond beautifully to something, and then the next person, nothing. One person can tolerate something perfectly, the next person, nothing. And it's a little unpredictable. Mm. So we do a lot of empirical trials. We try something, it doesn't work, we move on to the next. And I tell my patients, it's like finding the right key to the right lock, finding the right medication to the right brain. So I like having lots of different choices.